I tested both the Canon R50 and M50 to figure out which is the best one and for who. The two cameras look pretty much the same on the outside, but inside they're actually really different. And each camera actually has its own advantages and disadvantages. So the right camera really depends on what you need it for. So in this video, I'm going to explain what each of these cameras does and who it's right for. Also, if you want the best deal on the R50 or the M50, make sure to check out the links in the description down below. So in terms of design, the two cameras actually look really similar at first, but if you dig a little bit deeper, there's some pretty important differences. For one, the Canon R50 has the new RF lens mount, which means you can only use the new Canon RF lenses with this camera, but the new RF lenses are also sharper, look better and just overall better image quality, also better at autofocus because of a high speed 12 pin connection. So if you're someone that shoots a lot and really uses their autofocus, you are 100% going to notice that difference. And the M50 uses the older Canon M mount, which gives you older lenses, which aren't quite as sharp or high quality. However, these lenses are cheaper and on top of that, you have a much wider variety of lenses when it comes to the Canon M mount. So the right camera is really going to depend on what kind of lenses you want, if you use your autofocus a lot, and also the variety of lenses available for each camera. The R50 also has a slightly bigger grip, which feels better in your hands, but overall, both cameras should feel pretty similar because the R50, while it may not have as deep of a grip, the overall part that your hand holds on the camera is still about the same size as the R50, so they're gonna feel similar, but the R50 is slightly thicker at the top. And the buttons on the back of the camera are actually exactly the same. Some mode dials and buttons here and there are slightly different, but it's nothing that's actually going to sway your decision when picking a camera. One thing that I did notice when flipping through the menus and actually using these cameras, they're both just as fast as each other. One camera does not feel snappier or newer than the other. And both cameras also have a flip out screen so you can see yourself, that's also variable angle. And they both have an audio jack so that you can use an external microphone. And the R50 does have a better LCD screen on the back and the internal audio is about the same. But the biggest thing you'll notice as a photographer is that the electronic viewfinder is so much better. It's got better resolution, it's got a faster frame rate, and just overall, it's a better experience. But ultimately, what really matters is what you can shoot with these cameras. Funny enough, they actually have the exact same sensor in the exact same size. They both have a 24 megapixel APS-C size sensor, which is going to give you pretty similar image quality off the bat. However, the way these cameras process the photo and video in these cameras is actually pretty different, and that's going to impact your video and photo quality pretty big time. Big time? Is that a word? I mean, greatly. It's going to impact your image quality greatly. But it also depends on what you're shooting with these cameras, and depending on what you're shooting, some of you guys may not actually notice the improved image quality. The first thing you'll probably notice is the autofocus in the R50 is much faster, much smoother, and the R50 also has subject detect mode where you can tell it to only focus on people, animals, or vehicles, and it'll ignore everything else. Where the M50 does have face tracking, eye tracking, all that good stuff, but again, it's not as smooth or fast as the R50, and on top of that, it also doesn't have subject detect mode. For most people that are just casually shooting, you guys will not notice a difference. If you're shooting photos, you're definitely going to notice that autofocus. Both cameras have a 24 megapixel sensor, which gives you 24 megapixel photos in 14-bit RAW, and these images look great, 10 out of 10, without a doubt. For one, they both have Canon's colors. Canon cameras are known for having really good colors. Everything is true to life with the hint of warmth, and especially skin tones themselves look really, really good. And you almost don't need to edit the photos that come out of this camera. But one thing that you will notice is that the R50 is actually better at higher ISOs and does produce cleaner results when shooting in low light. The Canon M50 shoots at 10 frames per second, and it also has a physical shutter built into the camera. This is surprisingly fast for a casual camera. You can easily use this for lifestyle shooting, street photography, family events, concerts. This is a beast of a camera when it comes to photos. And the Canon R50 is slightly faster at 12 frames per second or 15 frames per second. However, it does not have a physical shutter and it uses first curtain mode or electronic shutter mode. Electronic shutter mode, you might get a bit of wobbly or jello effect, but at 12 frames per second in electronic curtain mode, you should be just fine. The R50 has some brand new smart features that I've actually never seen in a camera before, which in my opinion are very much worth talking about, but also put this camera above not only the M50, but also other cameras out there in a similar price point. 
So the R50 has three brand new automatic modes. First one is Automatic Plus, and it actually takes photos in this mode, kind of like your smartphone, where it takes a whole bunch of photos at the same time, combines them into one image to get the most light data, combines the highlights, the shadows, the midtones to give you one really crisp image. The second mode is Creative Assist, where it's kind of like using your camera in manual, but with some help from your camera. In this mode, you choose a color preset, how much background blur you want, how much contrast, brightness, color tone. You basically tell your camera what you want it to do, and it takes care of the technical settings by itself. It's, oh my god, it's like having an assistant with your camera. That's why it's called Creative Assist. Wow. I literally just got that. But my favorite automatic mode, and the one that I think most of you guys are probably gonna be using, is called Creative Bracketing. In this mode, you actually take one photo, but the camera actually gives you a whole bunch of different photos with different edits on them, like different color presets, different color tone, contrast level, brightness, and it basically gives you three edits back for the photo you just took. I've actually never seen something like this in a camera before, and if you're someone that's brand new to cameras, someone that just like cannot be bothered to like edit your photos, deal with all the technical settings, this is probably the mode that most of you guys are gonna be using. Next up, let's talk about video modes because that is probably where you're going to see the biggest difference between these cameras. So the M50 can shoot full HD up to 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second in low resolution 720p mode. Now, the M50 does have 4K, but it has a few problems. You can only shoot 4K at 24 frames per second. There's no option for 30. But on top of that, there's also a pretty massive crop into your sensor where your entire image just gets zoomed in. Now, this makes it harder to get wide shots in 4K, but also makes it really hard to vlog with this camera in 4K. And just overall, because you're throwing away half your sensor, the image quality just isn't as good. The R50, on the other hand, has a newer processor, so you can shoot Full HD at 60 all the way up to 120 frames per second. And the 4K also does not have a crop, but the cool thing about the 4K in the R50 is that it's also super sampled from 6K. So you take the full 24 megapixel 6K image area, squeeze it down into a 4K file, so you realistically have the resolution detail and clarity of a 6K image, but in a smaller 4K file size. Another really big difference is that the M50 has 8-bit color, where the R50 has 10-bit color. Now, this is not going to make a huge difference for most people shooting casually, but if you're planning on editing your videos, doing anything with your color, the R50 will be significantly better. So if you plan on doing any kind of color grading, the R50 is the obvious choice. One thing that did surprise me is that when it comes to stabilization, it's pretty much the same in both cameras. One camera is not more stable than the other, so if you're someone that's just casually shooting, doing walk and talk stuff, both cameras are going to be just fine. So when comparing the two cameras, both cameras are pretty much on par when it comes to handling. They're both small, they both work great, and you're not gonna notice a huge difference in terms of usability but you will notice faster autofocus with the R50, and the R50 also has better lenses, but the M50 might have older lenses, however, you get a much wider variety of lenses with the M50. It's kind of a toss up. I think what's really going to matter is what you're shooting with these cameras. If you're using them for photo, honestly, the two cameras are pretty on par. 24 megapixels, slightly faster frame rates in the R50, and also better autofocus, but if you're just shooting casually, you're not gonna see a difference. And if you are someone that's serious about their photography, you need that extra speed, the R50 is very much worth it. The place where you're probably gonna see the biggest difference is video. The R50 has 4K downsampled and 8-bit color. And if you're someone that's serious about their 4K content, the R50 is a very good choice. But if you're someone that's just casually shooting for themselves, you may not need 4K or want 4K. It takes up more space, it's harder to edit, and you would be just fine shooting HD. And if you compare both cameras in HD, you're really not going to see a huge difference. If you're having trouble deciding which camera is right for you, you can pretty much resolve it with one piece of information. The fact that the R50 is only $100 more than the M50 pretty much makes this camera a no-brainer. The M50 might still be good if you want the older lenses, which have a wider variety of lenses available for them, might be better. But if you're someone that wants a modern camera that's going to work really well, the R50 is a must-have. Plus, it has all these automatic modes to make your shooting experience easier. And if you guys want the best pricing on all of your camera gear, including the M50 and R50, make sure to check out the links in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.